How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Spongebob Thousand. Today is January 21st, 2022. As today, we're going to focus on the extreme Arctic blast that's expected to impact a lot of the eastern half of the United States this week with temperatures or wind chills potentially as low as negative 50 in some areas of the United States. And we'll also briefly discuss about the major ice and snowstorm that's currently impacting the Midwest right now. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay calls. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay content. So let's begin by taking a look at the GFS model wind chill forecast. So wind chill isn't of course representative of the actual temperature as pretty much wind chill combines the fact that combines pretty much the wind speed along with the temperature to come to a reasonable estimate to how the temperature really feels like. And you see that right around Wednesday night, we're seeing temperatures or wind chills well below 30 in the law of Minnesota. And we're seeing temperatures below zero throughout the Northeast. So we're going to expect a lot of cold for the eastern half of the United States over the next week. And it won't just be Wednesday night. It's going to be multiple nights. But first, let me show you guys the amount of wind we're expected to receive around, um, throughout the United States over the next week. Because... It's very interesting when you look at it, and it's really indicative of why we're going to see a uh, major arc black. So, so take a look at the winds right now. You see, of course, the strongest of the winds are located in the northern Midwest, and you know what direction they're coming from. They're coming from the northwest, bringing a lot of that Arctic air further southward to allow for a major or extreme Arctic blast to occur. And not only that, the wind, like I said, will contribute to the insanely cold wind chills that you're going to experience especially more in the northern midwest so you see that the winds right around northern midwest are right around 20 knots which if you convert that to miles per hour that's around uh, that's almost 30 miles per hour right there when we're talking about wind speed in the northern midwest and that's pretty strong and wind gusts should easily be higher than that we in fact have wind advisories and um issued throughout the northern midwest as the winds are expected to be that strong where we could see wind gusts over 50 miles per hour and of course since the northern great plains are is very flat there isn't a lot of mountain or friction or friction to really slow down the winds you could expect the winds to be quite strong in the northern midwest and that will definitely contribute to bringing a lot of that arctic air further southward into the united states to bring about a major arctic blast ahead so if we were to continue move forward with the wind speed because it gives a good idea of how far south that wind will go so if we were to take a look at that this is taking a little bit long to load i apologize okay now it's starting to load just a little bit um and you see the winds will continue um it won't be as strong right around the great lakes but again even a 20 mile per hour sustained wind is still strong enough to bring a lot of that arctic air for a southward and bring down those wind chills which is very important because that definitely makes the temperature feel a lot colder outside and you see that we're gonna ex and we're expecting to receive another clipper system that should bring a decent amount of wind as well um and another one uh, that which which won't bring wind as strong but still it will contribute to the stronger wind chills but you see that we're expecting to receive more of a northwesterly wind so point is is that a lot of the strong winds will contribute to not only bringing down the temperature and the arctic air for a south wind to the united states but bringing down those wind chills which will definitely be very concerning and you definitely need to stay indoors um over the next um week pretty much because or at least stay indoors as much as possible because it's gonna definitely be cold especially in the midwest where it could be dangerously cold at times so if i were to show you guys the temperature anomalies um over next week so tonight it's gonna actually be really cold in the northeast where we're seeing temperatures equivalent to 30 degrees below average throughout the interior northeast and the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountain ranges, at least in the northern portion. And even extending the coast, you're receiving temperatures around 10 to 20 degrees below average tonight. And that should be extremely cold. Um, it is based on, on 
what the GFS model is saying. Um, but however, I will assure you that the European model is sort of also agreeing with uh, temperature anomalies and how cold it really will be. So if we were to take a look at the two meter temperature, you see that tonight, New York City, you could receive temperatures um, below 10 degrees for tonight. And just outside of it, you're expected to receive temperatures um, below zero throughout the interior northeast. And this extends in the Midwest as well, where temperatures should be below zero for you guys. But um, if we were to continue move forward with the temperature forecast in terms of the day on Saturday, it still should be pretty cold where the high is going to be in the low 20s for a lot of new york city um for a lot of the eastern coast and northeast and not even um reach 20 and maybe even go um, be um below 10 degrees in the tier northeast and continuing to move forward once again at night you see that we're expected to receive another round of negative um, do, um negative temperatures throughout the no interior northeast and this extends the midwest as well but the cold really should come right around um right around sunday night where you should receive temperatures almost 20 um negative 20 in the northern in northern minnesota which is extremely dangerous that's gonna be you definitely need to stay indoors for that but take a look at again at the gfs model to really give a good idea of what the temperature anomalies are going to look like and how far um how far from a departure of from average you're going to um temperatures you're going to experience so if we were to take a look at that you see that where you're going to be for most of the eastern half of the united states um well below 10 degrees below average and this will continue where the interior northeast should receive temperatures below um 30 degrees below average and continuing even forward um you're going to see that we're going to see another round of cold air come right around tuesday so that definitely should be very concerning for a lot of the eastern half of the united states especially in the northern portion where you see by tuesday night or tuesday during the day temperatures could be as low as 40 degrees below average for the northern midwest which could be in record-breaking territory at that point so you definitely need be <laughs> definitely need to be prepared for the cold in the northern midwest as it's going to be cold that you haven't experienced in a very long time for a lot of people you see this cold air will even move to the northeast by late week by right around thursday january 27th where temperatures should be 30 degrees to 20 degrees below average for most of the northeast and this extends to um further southward where you should experience temperatures 10 to 20 degrees below average so there's definitely something you want to prepare for all throughout the eastern half of the united states now in terms of wind chills it's it's definitely insane the wind chills that i'm gonna show you guys right now so if i were to show you guys the wind chill um you're gonna see that it's just gonna be extremely cold um it's gonna be very difficult to escape that cold and you definitely need to be prepared for it so um let me just find the wind chill right here i apologize it's taking so long um where the, where is the wind chill um okay right here it is i apologize for taking so long but the wind chills you see guys for tonight negative teens for the um for the northern midwest but i want to show you guys right around tuesday because it gets down to negative 40s close to negative or over yeah over negative 40s in the northern midwest which is quite insane and we should see temperatures potentially close to negative 10 right around new york city and the more populated areas of the northeast which is definitely just extreme cold negative 20s right around monday night um and then you see that going you see that we see negative 40 right around sun as early as sunday night but it gets even worse right around tuesday where we could see temperatures close to negative 50 in terms of wind chill which is just in insane throughout the eastern half of the united states you need to pay close attention to this and even for a southward extending to the southeast you should experience wind chills in the 20s and potentially in the 30s for florida as free freeze watches and freeze warnings are in effect for the northern portion of florida so 
you need to prepare um, right around Florida. You guys typically don't experience um, temperatures that cold. So it's going to be feel very winter like for a state that feels that pretty much looks very summer like. So throughout northern Florida, you need to stay prepared for just extreme wind chills over the next week. Um, but um, and in terms of when will it end over the next week, it isn't expected to end. You see that the temperatures, the wind chills will continue to stay cold as we could even experience another big wind chill threat um, into next week as well. So that's something, something to keep in mind. You see a uh, CPC um, outlook um, expects that between the days of the 27th of January to the 31st of um january you see that it more likely than not you're going to experience cooler than average temperatures throughout the eastern half of the united states um with an emphasis more on the southeast so you need to prepare for much colder temperatures and in terms of the warnings like i said wind advisories are in effect and that will definitely contribute to the very cold wind chills you're going to experience and exciting to florida you're under freeze watches at this point at least the northern portion of florida and even the southeastern portion of louisiana where these are areas you haven't experienced freezing temperatures yet but now this week you do have the possibility of receiving uh, temperatures right around freezing so be prepared for cold in florida as you might need to get those coats out um right around for this week um especially during the night time so um here is my wind chill forecast is based on what the european model and the gfs model is saying so i'm expecting wind chills right around florida this could this um includes orlando florida which i expect wind chills to be right around 30 degrees which is quite cold for you guys 20 degrees with um 20 degree wind chills just north of that this includes new orleans this includes mobile alabama this includes dallas texas oklahoma city so just very with cold wind chills throughout those areas and then further northward i'm expecting wind chills right around 10 degrees and then zero degrees which includes washington dc um philadelphia new york city i expect wind chills to be right around zero for you guys um negative 10 in maybe just north of boston and we could see negative 20 degree wind chills right around the northern portion of wisconsin and negative 30 and potentially even lower in the negative 30 region which includes the northern um portion of the northeast as well as the northern portion of minnesota so just be prepared for extreme cold you don't want to be outside for a prolonged period of time especially with the strong winds i want to keep you guys safe so make sure to just stay indoors as much as possible because it could be dangerous to stay out there and make sure to be prepared with um a, a decent or at least a good amount of coats when you're going outside this week but next let's move on to the snowstorm that's currently impacting the mid-atlantic at this time and you see that we're seeing a heavy amount of snow throughout the carolinas um um like i forecasted over the past several videos you guys are expected to receive around three to six to six to twelve inches of snow um i'd say more like six to eight inches of snow um for especially further northeastward um right around north the northeastern portion of north carolina and the southeastern portion of virginia right around virginia beach but i think the bigger more dangerous threat could be this ice threat right along the north carolina and south carolina coast where you guys um look at the radar you're just experiencing a pretty heavy amount of freezing rain throughout myrtle beach wilmington jacksonville north carolina new Bern, north carolina and florence north carolina is getting involved with some freezing rain as well and this is expected to continue over the next several hours because we have this continuous stream of moisture riding along this frontal boundary and that's gonna um, bring that's gonna continue the ice sweat over the next several hours you see that even extending right around 9 p.m eastern standard time the wind i mean the um the ice should continue throughout the north carolina and south carolina coast and the heavy snow as well so you still got a long way to go throughout the carolinas when it comes to snowfall and um ice um as this should last all throughout tonight and into early saturday so let's let me show you guys the future radar so this is where we're at right now of course you st we're still seeing the ice right around 10 p.m on friday 1 a.m the ice is still there as well as the snow still impacting Rowley, north carolina and then 4 a.m the snow is 
pretty much is beginning to leave Raleigh, North Carolina, but West Virginia is still involved and very important is that the Carolina coast is still under an ice stress. So this should last for several hours and the ice should really accumulate as I wouldn't say it's um, till right around Saturday, 7 a.m. where this storm should for the most part be completely gone from the mid-atlantic so this should end right around 7 a.m saturday but by that time the damage could already just be done since this ice is going to last for several hours with um with some moderate to heavy freezing rain expected and same goes for snowfall where you could experience heavier snow bands associated with this low pressure system in terms of the ice accumulation of pretty much what's left so this isn't the total ice accumulation that's very important to keep in mind this is what's left for you guys and it's still extremely concerning because a large part of the north carolina and south carolina coast are expected to receive over a tenth of an inch of ice um on top of what they already experienced so you could easily experience over a half an inch of ice along north carolina and south carolina coasts uh, throughout myrtle beach and wilmington north carolina so Make sure to just stay off the roads for tonight because it's going to be quite dangerous right around the Carolinas. But I uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather-related content. Um, and I hope you guys all have a great day.